What's up guys? So I'm not really any good at this YouTube pish but I kind of thought I'd start making some videos about what I got up to kind of car builds and stuff like that So today I'm going to be attempting to manual swap the Toyota Mark II that I've got It's a 2002 GX110 so for you that don't know what that means it's a Mark 11 X chassis um, with a 1 GFE engine It's basically an IS200 underneath um, brakes, to steering, suspension, engine, diff, everyone, everyone's the same, subframes and everything. The only thing that's really different is the body panels, the interior. Um, there's obviously a lot more GDM than the one, that, the, the UK derived IS200. Um, so, this might help you if you're maybe doing a swap on a Verossa or a Mark II or a Mark II Blit. They're all the same. Um, it might even help you if you're doing it on an IS200. My thought behind it is it shouldn't be any harder than doing a clutch and you know if everything's the same as an IS200 everything should bolt up so what I've got <coughs> is an IS200 box um, I don't actually have a clutch kit yet but that's the last thing I just need to buy I've got pedals, clutch pedal, brake pedal, clutch master cylinder I've got a manual prop shaft and a flywheel um, flywheel bolts. So I think, apart from the clutch kit of course, that should be the only things I need. Um, pilot bearing as well obviously. So I'm just going to start basically taking bits apart. Um, like I said, it shouldn't be any harder than just in a clutch really, um, albeit this is an automatic so <laughs> there isn't a clutch to change but you, you know what I mean. It shouldn't be any harder than taking the box off, taking all the automatic stuff off, putting a manual box on, putting the flywheel on, putting the clutch pedal on. So yeah. Gonna um, make a start on that just now because I've been putting it off for ages, waiting on a nice dry day. I think this is as good as it's gonna get, really. So let's get to it. Okay, so inside the car, um, this did used to have a foot handbrake, so a foot operated handbrake. Um, that's been removed already by myself. I was just a case of unbolting it and you know getting a standard IS200 handbrake. Although the standard IS200 handbrake is on the left hand side of the center console for the right hand drive cars. Yeah, it's on the right hand side for the left hand drive cars, it's a bit weird how that works because um, I've got a manual Mark II as well and the handbrake's on that side so yeah, a bit strange how they've put it that way as you can see I've had to boot your fuck out of the centre console to get it to fit so yeah I might have to get myself an actual centre console that actually fits what well, it's meant for a handbrake um, at the very least I can take it off but it was just to kind of get it fitted up but yeah that's just the standard IS200 handbrake with the cable that goes underneath the car and it fits no problem at all and it's yeah, it works pretty good. Yeah, it locks up pretty good as well. So, so yeah. <clears throat> Underneath, as you can see, obviously a big pedal automatic. And if we look up, you can actually see the two holes for the master cylinder. Above that, you'll see there's two kind of gold-coloured screws. Those were for the foot handbrake. Yeah, obviously, I've removed the handbrake, but I've kept the screws there just in case. There is a hole in the middle, a threaded kind of hole in the middle. Not sure if that'll maybe fit that dowel. Um, I'll get a wee look maybe but uh, yeah certainly have a wee look at that. Brake pedal looks easy enough to just either trim down or just change it. So yeah first things first remove that grommet and get the off of the pedal up I think just see what it looks like in situ. Two hours later. So that's the pedal pretty much fixed in place now. Um, I mean it's still got that top bolt to go in but even without that top bolt it's pretty secure to be honest um, and the brake pedal as well I reckon we'll get away with just cutting it we'll just get a standard boot uh, rubber sorry from a, a manual IS200 we'll just chop it down until it fits on nice um, maybe try and get rid of this ugly looking thing as well and get a standard looking rubber one. I don't know what Lexus is worth thinking when they put these in, they look shit. So yeah, I reckon we'll get away with the standard pedal which saves a lot of hassle. Get the grinder out and we'll be mint. We'll get the get a rubber to fit. So yeah, uh, so next, well, apart from obviously waiting on, well, I'll try and see if I've got one of these. If not, we'll maybe see what actually goes underneath that dial. Because I think there's maybe meant to be like a rubber pad or something underneath it. So, oh, by the way, that top bolt was a fucking nightmare. I had to go through the spring and my back's, oh my back's fucked, <laughs> fucking hell. 
Right, next, I think, probably make a start on getting the box out to be honest. Probably start at the back because the diff's coming out anyway to get welded. I've also got poly bush mounts for the diff. So I think we'll start at the back, work our way forward, prop shaft off, and then get a look at taking the box off. It's <laughs> no easy way to do it really, it's just going to have to get down to it. Eh? I ideally would have liked to have done this on a ramp. But it's one of those things where you don't know how long it's going to be on a ramp, so you better do it in the house. <laughs> do, it, do it on the driveway, in the fucking freezing March air. It's actually a bit warmer than it has been to be honest, so it's kind of what I'm just getting on with it to be honest with you. So. Right, I think it's time for a cuppa and then we'll take that diff out I think. Let's go. Hello, you join me from underneath a Mark II, and it's not as nice as you may think. Diff's pretty straightforward on these to get out. Uh, I've actually had my white ones uh, diff out already. They're not too complicated. Interesting fact about these. Not sure if IS200s are the same. I wouldn't think so. Is the right diff mount um, is non-existent on the kind of base models. Um, my IRV has one, and it's obviously the top of the range. So I think that's why it's got one. Not sure why Toyota just didn't put a bush in to be honest, but. I suppose with the kind of power these things run, it's not really necessary. But um, I've got a power, a strong flex, sorry, strong flex poly bush to go in. Um, so obviously I'm taking the diff out anyway, so it should make it a bit easier to get the old bush out. At least there's only one bush to remove on this one, as opposed to two on my old one. It was a wee bit of pain to get out. Air chisel done the job last time. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any air chisel, which is a shot I got. So yes, I think the first thing's first. I need to take this exhaust off because it's coming off anyway. So. But yeah, the bat box on these are fucking massive, like, um, big box here, big box there, another big box at the front, and then a cat in the downpipe, I think. So yeah, these things are really quiet when they're running, so this will obviously, it'll probably be staying for now, and then I might chop a few boxes off, <laughs> I might chop this one off. So yeah, we'll see, um, we'll see how we go on with it, I can see two boxes at the front there, so... We'll get the Milwaukee out, see if it takes it off, if not, get the pry bar out and start swearing. Small pal, baby! That shit is money. Alright, so they took him out, no problem. Just need to uh, take some hangers off and then that's the back box off in the middle section, kinda. It's that fucking long, it's got two middle sections. <laughs> wow, that's an exhaust. That weighs a fucking ton. Three boxes, man. Well, two on this, but fuck me. That's, that's a box, I like. Jesus Christ. I wasn't expecting there to be two rubbers right there. So that kind of gives you a bit more room. Right, so that's the diff out. Bit more of a cunt than I thought it would be to be honest. I think it's just kind of the space constraints to be honest with you. But these were a bit of a pain because you can't really get proper ratchet in there. It kind of hits off anything, so I ended up having to use like a T-bar, <laughs> um, and the only spanner you can get in this side is an open end because it hits off the you know the pinion of the gear where the pinion goes in. These were fucking tight, 19s. It's quite cool how they're slotted. Good idea from Toyota. Um, they weren't too bad, they came off of the gun no problem. These are a fucking nightmare. It's a 12mm Allen drive, which is fine, but trying to get a 12mm Allen drive socket in that gap, you know, barely wide enough for my hand to go in. Um, what is it with Japs and always putting stuff next to the boot well, man? But, got it out eventually. Oh, you can see what I mean now about the uh, the mount on the right hand side, it's, there's nothing there. You can see the threads aren't the best and it is an alloy housing so hopefully we can salvage the threads otherwise we might have to get a new backing plate for it. Um, not the end of the world but I think ideally we'll be able to make that work. And then these are just again an Allen drive, it's like an M12, M14 fine thread. It's a weird setup to be honest, like two next to each other as well but that's the job. Uh, it is a sealed unit, like I said, there's a wee breather there, but no oil came out, so... Um, and uh, it is a four, 
four stud on each hub, well, each axle, each wee stub axle, but um, yeah, so I'll get this to my mate to weld it, because um, it's no good open. So the prop carrier is pretty straightforward, 10mm, 10mm, 14 14 so let the old Milwaukee loose on it, can't see it being too much of a problem, hopefully not. Doesn't help these are all covered in under seal, but I wonder who done that. It's me. Better than rust though. Right, 14. Might need an extension though. Yes, 14. I think we'll need a wee extension, but not too bad. Maybe not. Is there nothing these guns can't do? Get ready for this prop to hit me in the face. That'll be the spacer that goes on top then. Right, so there we go. So, hopefully this should just pull out and not cover me with oil. Getting jammed at the back. Try to do this one handed is certainly a challenge. This is going to hit me in the face. And there we go. One yoke. Oh, Jesus. There we go. Automatic prop shaft. Boom. Now, I'm not sure if the rear half's the exact same. Um, we might keep the rear half just because it's getting a bit nicer. Kind of. oh, there we go. Getting dripped on. I just heard a fucking leak and I just felt my face getting wet. Ideal. So yeah, maybe the car obviously isn't absolutely level so it's probably leaking a wee bit. Um, like I said, I might get a drip tray just now and drain the oil while it's on the ground because yeah, once I start wiggling a box about it, I don't want that shit getting anywhere near me. So I think the next job is to let the ATF drain out the box. Probably not be getting used again anyway, so. Okay, so this is the two prop shafts here, and the one at the top is the automatic one that I've just removed. The bottom one is from an IS200 manual. Um, I'm quite surprised, they're actually kind of the same length, almost. The manual one is a little bit longer, maybe like 10, 20 mil if you're lucky. Not too sure if we maybe have to run half in half. Um, I'm not really going to know until we get everything mounted up, so I'm not really know, but... Yeah, I'm quite surprised, but worst case scenario we can kind of Frankenstein something, but I'm sure we'll get it to work. The only thing that's really thrown me off is where the prop bearing sits, it's a lot far further forward. You know, you're talking 100 mil forward, so yeah, that may be an issue, but I don't even know if there's any mounting points close to that, but again, we can get a look. Uh, the diff obviously isn't moving, so that's definitely going to sit about there. But the yoke is a bit black, like, might have to take a wire brush to that or something. But aye, yeah, should hopefully work. Hopefully, <laughs> look at the size of this box, it's fucking huge. I don't know how much that weighs, but it's easy 30 kilos that whole exhaust there. That's, that's a lot. So, I think we might have to just look at getting something else made while it's off. Again, it's more money, but <laughs> that's going to weigh the car down a lot. It's kind of a wee bit of surface rust on it anyway, to be honest, but the box itself, there's no leaks or that, but maybe a good time to upgrade, especially if you never know, I might put a turbo on it later, so maybe the better option is just to go for a big bore exhaust, but you can get plenty of stainless ones on eBay for an IS200, just need to see if they fit. Again, it's one of those things that probably will fit, but you won't know until you buy it, and then it's a bit too late. So I've currently got the oil draining, um, just letting the, the most of it get out. That way I don't get any nasty drips later on. Um, obviously it's impossible to get all of the ATF out because that box is usually automatic transmissions. I've got anywhere for like 7 to 10 litres of oil in them, so it's going to be a lot of oil in it. But um, yeah, 
We'll just like, probably let it drain overnight, to be honest, just to get the most of it out. Because it's starting to get a bit chilly. Not that it's been fucking warm. And then I might maybe look at taking that front pipe of the exhaust off just to make it a bit easier for access-wise. And then we'll start looking at getting that box off. Okay, so that's the automatic transmission fluid drained as much as possible. I had a look online and it's actually only two and a bit litres that goes in it. I was quite surprised I'm sure when I looked last time at my Supra when I had it, it was like 10 litres, but I could be talking absolute shit. Maybe getting mixed up with cooling or something. Um, so I'm going to pop that drain plug back, back in just in case. Um, maybe get another Max that's covered in ADF now. And I think we'll look at removing the gear stick and stuff like that. Because um, that's going to help us have to come out. So I think I may as well remove that now. Maybe give us a bit better access to remove the linkage, so let's get that off. Okay, so I've removed the centre console out of the way just for a bit of room. Uh, taking the handbrake gator off as well and the gear surround. So took the knob off as well. It just spins off. It's threaded, which is handy. Um, looking at this, there's some 10mm, 12mm bolts there. And hopefully it's a case of just taking them off and the whole like assembly should just hopefully come off. Take them out and see what it's like. There's a connector there as well I need to take out. Um, I think that's it really. Looking at it anyway, we'll find out as soon as we take it off. Might have to remove this, but I don't think we will. We'll find out. So with all these bolts removed, uh, there's a couple of tabs here that hold the carpet in place. It is obviously loose, but I think the mechanism underneath is obviously now holding it in place. Um, so I'm going to get underneath and have a wee look, see what's causing this. I think it's that bolt that I pointed out earlier. So yeah, that's the bottom of the kind of mechanism there. And you can see it's just that one bolt that holds it onto the actual selector rod, if you like. Um, so yeah, I think just take that 10, 12 mil nut off and that should be that. Should hopefully come separate. Underneath's been removed. It's still quite reluctant to come out. Yeah, it looks like it's just these metal tabs hitting off the centre console house and ideally I don't really want to remove this because it looks like quite a substantial piece of the dashboard trim to remove so <coughs> I'm just going to try and persuade it out because the manual shifter isn't obviously going to take up as much room so I think once you get this out of the way it should be a case of you know easy peasy but I bet I need to, I bet I'll probably need two hands for this so so I managed to get it out with a bit of persuasion um, so this is the mechanism here it's fucking massive. So with that part of the exhaust out of the way, a lot more room to see kind of things. There's uh, two exhaust support kind of brackets there. There's also lines for the automatic transmission. I'll need to follow them, see where they go. Just make sure I can either cut them or just disconnect them. Whatever's fucking going to be easier and more applicable. And then it's just a case of these bolts. Um, take the weight of the box really and. Yeah, maybe try and remove this dipstick as well, actually. And then um, make sure there's no connectors plugged in and stuff like that. Um, and then just the gearbox mount. Take the weight, and then we're good to go. Right, so I followed those two lines that go from the automatic transmission. And I followed them, and I've never seen this before. They go to the radiator. <laughs> but the thing is, it's not coolant that's coming out of them, it's oil. So unless some ATF gets pumped into like a passage in the radiator, I really don't know, but you can actually see the two lines there. That's them there, and they basically follow all the way back to the, the box. But if you have a look underneath... So you can kind of see them a bit better there. So that's them there, and then they come, and they go into the bottom of the radiator. I've never ever seen that before, so... It's not cooling that's in them 100%, it's just oil. But what I'm thinking is, for now anyway, until I can blank them off, is just disconnect that, disconnect that and just bridge it together, just so it's not going to be leaking anything. So that's the lines removed. Um, there's some clips that hold them in place, one under the power steering pump, one in between the two manifolds, and one kind of at the bulkhead area, you can get that from underneath. Um, these definitely need to be cut in order to be removed, unless you want to take the exhaust manifold off, probably the engine mount. Um, yeah, I don't plan on going backwards anyway, so I'll just be snipping these in half. You could probably bend them if you really wanted to, but I reckon a quick, a quick shot of the old grinder will get them out pretty easy enough. 
Uh, a little bit of fluid comes out of them, so make sure you've got a drip tray handy. Uh, as you can see, I've not paid attention and gone all over my gun, which is fantastic. If all the places for that fluid to land, it just happened to land right on my gun. Great. So, yeah, um, we'll get the snips out of our grinder and chop them, and then get them to fuck. And then look at removing any leftover clips that I've missed. It turns out with some gentle persuasion and manipulation you can get them out in one piece um, just in case you really want to reuse them just in case but um, yeah they'll just be getting bent I think. Right let's get back underneath this and see what bolts we need to take out. So the big push rod that basically controls what gear you're in. I think the sensor is actually here rather than inside the car. So I'll plug there. So what I want to do, there's a split pin at the top there, I'm just going to remove that and hopefully get this rod out of the way. Should give us a bit more room and I can maybe unplug that. So that rod came off not too bad, just that split pin that holds it in really. Um, so there's a connector up there that I've unplugged. I'm assuming that's what tells the car what gear it's in. There's a couple on the other side. Ugh. There's one just there. Just where my finger is. There is another one up here. Had a rage quit quit with that one, I ended up just fucking it. And there's one here. Um, that's all the connectors I can see. There is also a little, like, you know, a support for the wiring up there, which you'll probably need to disconnect, but I can't really get access to that just now. Could probably take that 10mm off, but easier just letting the box down a bit and then I'll be able to get it once the mount's off. So, yeah. I think it's now time to undo these gearbox bolts. Right, so that's the gearbox bolts removed. Um, there's like four at the bottom, 14 mil, this size. And then there's another two at the starter motor at the top and this side here. And there are slightly longer 14 mil, this one with the shank on it. Then you've got some 17s, I think there's two either side and there's two right at the top which are an absolute cunt, they are tight as fuck. Um, the two top ones you can only really get when you drop the back mount down and use loads of extensions and try and crack it. And then once you've done that, um, the torque converter is bolted within here. There's actually a little inspection hole. There's a little cover here that you have to take off and the torque converter bolts. I think there's six of them in total. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, there's six. Um, tiny wee things there. In fact, maybe just five actually. No, no, there is six. Um, once you take all them off, then the box will kind of separate. You can see it's starting to separate now. Um, so you shouldn't even need to do much wiggling. I've obviously got the back end supported by a trolley jack. I'm just going to take the jack off. Um, to be honest with you, I'm not even that fussed about breaking it now. So I'm probably just going to lay it down on one and just hope for the best. Uh, yeah, apart from that, that's pretty much it. Um, give the box a wiggle and yeah, hope for the best. I just cut the dipstick purely because, well, I'm not, definitely not keeping it. Uh, it does separate. Um, you literally just pull it and it will come apart. So obviously I've cut it there, but it does separate there if you just want, if you do plan on keeping it. You can see it's sleeved, it's slightly bigger, but not something I'm too fussed about. So yeah, I'm just going to let this jack down and yeah, hope for the best. I might put like a tyre or something underneath it. And there she goes. Literally just give it a little wiggle at the front and let the jack down at the back and hey presto comes right off. And it's a fucking unit. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just gonna, gonna get this out of the way. Hopefully it fits out of the car. Because <laughs> if I can't get it out, that's gonna be an issue. And yeah, like I said, so much ATF comes out even though you've drained it and stuff like that. So yeah, be prepared to wear some shit clothes. You can see um, why you need to remove these. The torque converter is physically bolted to the flex plate, so the flex plate is obviously bolted to the engine, so it won't separate until you take these off. So, in case you're wiggling like fuck, I wonder why it won't come off. Because um, I have done a GS300 before, and it's, yeah, I remembered I couldn't get it off, and that was why. So, alright. Thank God I get this out of the way and get this cleaned, and then you can look at the back of the engine. And here we have one automatic transmission. I believe it's an A304, but I could be wrong. Let me know if I'm wrong. Um, it's a four speed, I think. Yeah, it is a four speed. I think it's the same box that comes in the Supras, like the non turbo ones. I think even the turbo ones came with these. 
early GSEs. It's a very popular Toyota transmission, so it's probably used in quite a lot. If anyone's looking for one, needs a dipstick. <laughs> yeah, these things are pretty much worthless. Nobody wants one. It's fucking massive, it just fits under that gap and no more. <laughs> so, I was a bit optimistic when I put the car on stands in the first place. But I remembered why, because, yeah, the boxes are big. So, aye. Right, time to clean up this mess because, like I said, even though I've drained it, there's so much fluid that you can't get rid of in the torque converter. So that's going to take some, <laughs> some cleaning up. So, yeah, I need to give me a wee minute to clean that shop. So, there's a lot more room in here now. <laughs> Just shows you. So, obviously this flex plate will need to come off. Um, just those six bolts there. I have bought flywheel bolts for a standard IS200. Um, hopefully they'll fit. Uh, that dipstick, I'll see if I can maybe get that out of the way as well, just so it's not in the way. Um, don't think there's anything I should really be doing while I've got access to this. I don't think there's anything you know, behind here that I need to get to. So, um, ah, just in case I get that flywheel whapped off. I think they're actually quite useful for maybe JZ. BMW box conversions, but no use to me, so we're going in the scrap. Uh, so, yeah, get my gun just now. So, the flex plate comes off. There's a little spacer that goes on top of the flex plate, and there's also one underneath. It's like five miles thick or so, so I'm not sure if I need to use these yet. So, I'll kind of keep them just handy. The thin one goes on the top, and the thick one goes underneath. Um, hopefully the the bore of the crank oh, it's greased up. The bore of the crank is the same as the manual crank. <laughs> Otherwise we're in trouble. Because um, obviously I've got a pilot bearing to go in there. Because uh, the automatic doesn't use a, a kind of a pilot bearing. It just uses like a dowel on the torque converter. Um, let's make sure that's not leaking, but it looks okay. It's probably from above. So yeah, um, I'm going to see if I can remove this dipstick while I've got access to the, the back of this. Looks like there's a, a 10mm up there, don't know if you can see it but I'll take that off and hopefully I can remove this dipstick so it's not in the way because it's redundant now. Right, so we've run into our first problem. This is the flywheel that I'm going to be using. It's a uh, single mass flywheel as opposed to the dual mass flywheels that come on IS 200s. This is the flex plate obviously that's came off um, and obviously these are the two kind of spacers if you like um, that come with it. Um, you can see obviously the bolts are a lot shorter because the flex plate is really thin. You can still see there's about kind of 20 mil of thread you know to engage in the crank. However, we move over to the flywheel. Now, these are the automatic flex plate bolts. These are the standard dual mass flywheel bolts. You can see that there's kind of almost double the length, really. Um, but the rest of it's not threaded. So it's a bit of a problem because you can see that the short flex plate bolts are far too small, far too short. And you can see that the IS200 dual mass flywheel bolts are far too long. It's not enough thread and also they would probably bottom out to be honest. So yeah, bit of a bit of a you know obstacle to be honest with you because I have no idea where I'm gonna be able to get these bolts done. I might be able to get someone to machine these bolts. Maybe like I don't know actually because they're a bit short. Because the you can see that the the base of it's got like a shank which obviously acts as like a you know support. But the bottom's a bit thinner. I don't think you'd be able to add thread to that, so it's kind of no good. So, bit of a bit of a kick in the shin, to be honest. Um, when I bought the flywheel, I did think that, like, why wasn't there any bolts with it? There may be one use only, and the person that's sold it to the person I bought it off of has maybe not included them because of that, but it would have been maybe good to get them just so we could measure them up, but that's what happens when you buy used parts, I suppose. Um, I mean, the flywheel itself looks pretty good and it looks got a decent nick. Looks like it's been balanced and it's certainly got the right engine roll on it, so hmm. I suppose I could get a sharp end right wherever I want on it too. I could write 2JZ on it if I wanted to. <laughs> but yeah, so bit of a 
bit of an obstacle, but we need to go back to the drone board and figure out how we're going to fix this. Maybe do a bit of research on the internet and see if anyone's got a dual mass, kind of, well, not dual mass, but like a single mass conversion that they've done. Even if I used the spacer, which I don't, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't do that anyway. But even if I did, it would still be far too long. So yeah, even with the spacer, there's still pff, 10 mil. So yeah, it's no good. So back to the drawing board. So I think we'll call it a day. Um, it's not the end that I wanted, but unfortunately that's what happens when you do these kind of things and they're not documented very well. And even trying to get a, a 1 GFE solid lighting flywheel, a lot of them are for Altezas and stuff like that. So again, it's all coming for Japan and all this kind of stuff. So. I don't even know where to be able to find the bolts or the hardware to mount it, so maybe I'll have to message a few people and see if someone can provide me with some bolts. So, I have to put this on hold for a bit. I don't know how quickly I'm going to be able to get them, or if my finances can afford to buy them right away because I'm skint. So, yeah, I'll call it a day there for now. Um, I'll keep you up to date and let you know, so stay tuned for part two.